Joining me now is former Trump White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson. First of all, I want to say it's incredibly courageous when you, but that you speak out, and I appreciate you being here tonight. It's so important for people to hear your voice on all of this. Thank you for having me. Back let me again. let me start uh, always. Uh, let me start with this. It's been a while, of course, since we sat down together, and in that time, as I just mentioned, Trump, a number of his allies have attacked you personally. I mean, as I just said, Trump, Trump posted, will she be prosecuted for what she did and said? What is your response to that? You know, Jen, I have been part of the Trump administration for several years, and I know when he gets, starts, when, I know when he starts to get nervous. I know that Donald Trump has to be nervous, if not extremely frightened right now, because what is happening is he is deploying his most loyal allies on Capitol Hill to try to discredit not only my testimony, but the entire January 6 investigation as a whole. The facts are out there, and he doesn't want the facts out there because he doesn't want the American people to know what actually happened. He's hoping that his false narrative of what happened on January 6 is what the American people will believe heading up to, no to the November election. And it's really imperative that we keep speaking about the truth because the facts are the facts. And Donald Trump has tried to smear those with his deceit and his lies. Now, what I will say to that, too, though, is when you mentioned the report, mm. much of my testimony is corroborate, corroborated. But there also is one key piece, and that's the fact that he knew that there were weapons in the crowd. Mm. His Secret Service agents testified that he was aware that that's why they were not coming through the magnetometers. That's a key piece of evidence for the American people to know and for the jury, hopefully, if that will convened before the election, because it speaks to his state of mind. And it also is reported that only one, after, one hour after he got back from the ellipse, he called Kevin McCarthy and said that it was Antifa attacking the Capitol. But he also said that they were his people. So, you know, all this being said, Jen, Donald Trump lashes out when he feels threatened. And he's lashing out right now because he does not want the American people to know that he was responsible for the single most uh, egregious attack on our democracy. There, there's no question. I think it's so interesting you pose it as he feels threatened. It feels right to me. He also, though, there's a lot of people like yourself who've been speaking out who might be witnesses here. Do you feel that he is trying to publicly pressure you? You know, I, it's hard to climb into his psyche, and it's not something that I really would love to do. It's, I would anticipate it being a fairly dark place to be. But what I will say to that, you know, pushing aside my case, you know, there are times where I get, I do get really discouraged and I wouldn't, and I want to be honest about that. It is difficult, especially when there are some of my former friends and colleagues who I know know better and members of Congress that I worked really closely with amplifying his lies. But I think when we look at the bigger picture, he's not just threatening this with me. He's threatening it with Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger, people who served on the January 6th committee. He's threatening other potential witnesses in other cases, that federal indictments that have come down, potential jurors, judges. There are a large swath of Americans that may need security going into this next year because he has committed to unleashing political violence on these people. That's not what a leader does. And we're expecting him to be the Republican nominee again. He's there to support the people of America, not to silence them. He want, a leader empowers people, not lead, they don't lead through fear. I wanted to get your thought. Sarah Matthews, a friend of yours, has been on this show, and she said something that's really stuck with me, and I think it's applicable, too. I wanted to play that and talk to you a little bit about that, too. Obviously, we look around, and it's mainly the women, and especially young women, who are speaking out, and so I'm... I would just encourage maybe the men who are twice my age, who held way higher positions of power than me, who also know that Donald Trump is unfit to serve, to speak out. And I know that we've got some time uh, before Election Day, but I'm hoping that as we get closer and they see the threat that Donald Trump is and the very real chance that he could be president again, that they will come forward. I think it's so important to state here, both of you spoke out in your 20s. Uh, young women who believed, who were Republican, who supported the Republican Party, supported Trump, spoke out because it wasn't right in your 20s. There are a lot of people, including older men, and she said it, but I'm going to repeat it, who have not. Do you wish they would? Of course, I wish anybody would that was in the administration that maybe not even until January 6th, but people that know Donald Trump's character. When we evaluate the politicians that we elect to office, Policy is important, but especially in this period in American history, 
character takes precedent over policy positions. When we look at this election, you know, there have been more people that have spoken out. But what I take issue with is when they speak out once or twice and expect that to be enough. And they're quiet then after Trump, that. Exactly. Trump world has an effective mechanism where they do hold a megaphone to the American people, where they use that megaphone to spread conspiracy theories and lies. And that's how they manipulate and seduce people to believing what Donald Trump says. We need people who were on the inside to do the exact same thing, but to speak truth to the power of the lies that Donald Trump has done. Otherwise, we might be tumbling towards a dictatorship. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.